Hey everyone, we're here at the Global Power Museum at Barksdale Air Force Base in Shreveport, Louisiana. My name is Natasha Bajma, and these are my dogs, Charlie and Luna. We're embarking on the adventure of a lifetime, a 365-day journey across America with my Ford 350 Super Duty pickup truck and a truck camper. But this is no ordinary road trip. This is what happens when a disillusioned nuclear weapons expert, going through a midlife crisis, tries to begin a new career, but can't quite get off topic. Radioactive Road Tripping is a travelogue show that documents my transformation from a longtime national security expert to a newbie director, cinematographer, and producer. We're in Shreveport, Louisiana, staying at a U.S. Army of Corps Engineers campground on the outskirts of the city. As you know, I'm touring nuclear weapons related sites around the country, and there are a few of those located in Louisiana, including a couple of former Nike Hercules sites, and of course, Barksdale Air Force Base. The Global Power Museum is located on Barksdale Air Force Base, which is home to the Second Bomb Wing and the Air Force Global Strike Command. Air Force Global Strike Command is a major command of the U.S. Air Force, created in 2008. It provides combat-ready forces to support nuclear strategic deterrence and conventional operations. The second bomb wing consists of three squadrons of B-52H Stratofortress bombers, which represent a key component of the U.S. nuclear deterrent. B-52s are long-range, heavy bombers, they can perform a variety of missions, including the delivery of nuclear weapons by air. When I say by air, I'm referring to one of the three legs of the U.S. nuclear triad. To support its nuclear deterrence mission, the U.S. can deliver nuclear weapons from land-based missiles, submarine launch missiles, nuclear-capable fighter jets, and heavy bombers, which include the B-52s and the B-2 bombers. The B-52 Stratofortress Heavy Bomber can carry gravity bombs such as the B-61, which has a variable yield of up to 340 kilotons, and the B-83 with a yield of 1.2 megatons. To give you a sense of scale, the bombs that were dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki did not exceed 20 kilotons. The B-52 bomber can carry air-launched cruise missiles with W-80 warheads with variable yields of up to 200 kilotons. Today, each B-52 bomber carries up to 20 air-launched cruise missiles like the AGM-86B. So we're here to visit the Global Power Museum. The museum is actually accessible to the public, but you first need to get a visitor's pass from the visitor center located at the north gate. There are several interesting exhibits inside the building and a large air park with many retired planes. We're gonna take a look inside first and then go see the airplanes. So right inside the door, there's a Mark 28 thermonuclear bomb casing. The Mark 28 bomb was first produced in 1958 and it comes in a number of different models that could be delivered by a wide range of fighter jets and heavy bombers, including the B-52. The Mark 28 bomb has a variable yield extending up into the megaton range. The bomb remained in service until the early 1990s, and it's famous for its involvement in several high profile accidents. In 1966, during a refueling operation, three of these bombs dropped out of a B-52 over the country of Spain. Two landed on the ground and were destroyed on impact. The third was lost at sea for about three months until it was finally recovered. Most of the museum exhibits are designed to preserve the heritage of the second bomb wing and provide a historical timeline dating back to 1918. There's also a really cool aviation gallery inside the museum. There's an interesting September 11, 2001 exhibit here with the actual podium and furniture for when President George W. Bush made his first speech on 9-11 from the 8th Air Force headquarters right here at Barksdale Air Force Base. So there's an exhibit dedicated to nuclear weapons and that's what I'm really excited to see. It features several displays on US intercontinental ballistic missiles, which are also operated by the US Air Force and of course the B-52 bomber.
My favorite exhibit provides an overview of Operation Secret Squirrel involving B-52 bombers. Now this was a top secret operation, officially known as Operation Senior Surprise, but the B-52 crews gave it an unofficial name, super cool name, which was later acknowledged on the mission patch. During the Gulf War in 1991, B-52 bombers flew from Barksdale Air Force Base to Iraq to deliver conventional armed cruise missiles on eight targets and then flew back home to Louisiana without landing. Their 14,000 mile mission took about 35 hours in total. The operation was classified until 1992. Now we're heading out to the air park to check out any of the retired airplanes that may have once carried nuclear weapons. This is the B-47E Stratojet, manufactured by Boeing. It entered service in the 1950s. It was the first all-jet strategic bomber deployed by the United States. This particular model was deployed in 1953 and could deliver nuclear weapons. This is the casing of a Titan II re-entry vehicle. The Titan II was an intercontinental ballistic missile that carried a nine megaton warhead. That's 9,000 kilotons. So remember, the bombs used on Hiroshima and Nagasaki were less than 20 kilotons. So the nuclear warhead would be located inside this cone shape, which rests on the tip of the missile. This is the B-29 Super Fortress. This aircraft was the type that dropped two nuclear bombs on Japan in 1945. This is a B-52 Model D. The B-52D is no longer in service, but of 750 B-52s produced, about 170 were actually B-52Ds. This is the B-52 Model G. Again, this plane is also no longer in service. About 193 of this model were produced, making it the most abundant of all types of B-52s. And that brings us to the end of the tour. I hope you enjoyed coming along for the walk. Perhaps you'll get a chance to visit the museum someday yourself. If you want to follow my journey, please remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you'd like to have access to behind the scenes content and exclusive merchandise, become a patron at patreon.com forward slash Natasha Bajama.